Hi everybody, welcome to my 13th axial bar video. In this video, I'm going to be solving this problem here, and I'm going to find out what's the maximum load P if the certain stresses in these materials here are a certain allowable stress. If you want to know something else about axial bars, feel free to check out any of my other axial bar videos. So before we get started, let's just try to understand a little bit more about the, what this question is actually asking us. So we have this cylinder, if you will, that has a core made out of brass and it has a casing of aluminum. We're pushing down on it. And at a certain stress in the aluminum, 80 megapascals, you know, something's going to happen to that aluminum. It's going to fail. It's going to break. You know, something bad's going to happen. So this is like a design question. What's the maximum load we can put on this thing if these materials can only handle so much stress? Okay, so sometimes these design questions can get you confused because although you know how to find the normal forces in them, how to find the stresses in them, when they ask you some sort of like, you know, a higher degree of, you know, questioning, then you need to just think a little bit more about what they're asking you, what you need to do to find the answer to that. So stress, we know, is normal force over area. We can find the area by the diameters we can find the normal forces so that's going to be the first step and kind of a rule of thumb that I use when I solve these questions is if you want to find you know, P max just put P max on all your questions and pretend it was a number and just drag it along until you can find what it is okay so because we're finding stress we're going to need the normal forces let's go ahead and find the normal forces we're going to have to make a cut in this bar to expose them let's make a cut right here okay Let's look up, and let's get a free body diagram of this piece. Okay, so it's going to look like this, wide, cut edge, P pushing down on here. Okay, and then there's of course two materials, so let's kind of represent that somewhat here. And now let's talk about which way to draw the reactions in. So, so far I've been telling you, you know, always draw them pulling away from the source. All right, if you don't know. And if you don't know, it's best just to, you know, put them in tension. But in this case, I'm going to break my own rule and just use some very simple logic just to make sense. If this is pushing down, the internal forces are going to have to be pushing up. All right, you can be very systematic and put it the other way. But then you're just going to have to go back when you get your answer. They're all going to be negative, so you're just going to have to interpret them as being you actually flip them around. But I'm just going to take them to be this way for now. So this is, of course, in the brass. And the aluminum is like one core here. So really, this is not an A and A for aluminum. It's actually divided by two in this case because it's just one force that's around the whole bar, you know, around the whole wrapping piece that's pushing up okay so put in the directions and some of the forces in y equals zero okay so then we can say na plus nb equals p all right we'll call this one this is our forces all right since this is statically indeterminate all right, as you can have seen in the title, or we can just, you know, think about it. There's no other way we can find what NA and NB are by just using equilibrium. We're going to need to go to displacement now. All right. So if we imagine this cylinder here, we're crushing it with this load P. Each material is going to be compressed the same amount, all right? There's going to be no way that, you know, somehow this core is going to like slide down more than you know the exterior piece of aluminum. It's all no, it's all just going to go down the same amount. All right, so we can just simply write delta brass equals delta aluminum. There we go. All right. Now, let's just call this 2. Go into the force displacement relationship and that of course we know very well it's NL over AE so we can write NB 
LB over AB, EB equals an aluminum length of the aluminum, A of the aluminum, E of the aluminum. All right, now these could all be different. They could all be the same. All right, in this case, the lengths are the same. Those go away. But the areas and the Young's modulus are all different, so we can't cross those out. Okay, so let's rewrite this equation as NB equals N aluminum and times some ratio of AE, all right? So in this case, it turns out to be AB, EB over A aluminum, E aluminum. You can see that if you just quickly work through the algebra there. All right. So we have all, all the information we know or we need. An equation with NA and B, another equation with NA and B, two equations, two unknowns. Let's get to work and solve this. All right. If we put number three into one, then we get an aluminum. Whoops plus and brass, and we have that in terms of N-aluminum. EB, quick substitution here, equals P. All right, now we can solve for NAL, factor it out, equals P over one plus EB, EB, over A aluminum, E aluminum. All right, there we go. So we know that the stress in the aluminum is going to be the normal force in the aluminum over the area of the aluminum. So we just take this equation and divide it through by A aluminum. That's essentially the same as timesing the denominator by A aluminum. All right, so you can imagine it's going to cross up this piece and add it to here. <coughs> So the sigma for the aluminum is equal to P over A, A, L plus A, B, E, B over B, A, L. All right, I like to keep this denominator in the bottom. If you want, you can get rid of it by times the top and bottom by E of the aluminum, and then you'll get some other ratio. I myself like to keep it like this. as It allows me to make comparisons. So if I would say, what if EB equals to EAL? What would happen then? It makes it easier to think about what this equation changes if you have it like this in the denominator. Okay, so now essentially the same process. We can go through again to find you know, the stress in the brass. We can take this equation, make it NAL equals to NB times some ratio, and then sub NAL into this equation and then solve through it exactly the same way we did here. All right, so I'm not gonna work all through that. I'm just gonna tell you that the stress in the B is P over AB plus A aluminum E aluminum over E B. All right, keep these in brackets. Now, let's just take a quick reality check and compare these two. They have some symmetry, right? So the stress in the brass, you know, Basically, this denominator is like the inverse of that denominator right, denominator right there. So if you have some sort of symmetry going on, that's kind of like a, you know, like a check you can do. I mean, it's not a rigid mathematical check, but it's kind of an intuitive check. All right. So now we got to find P max if we have some stresses max. All right. So we're given those values here. Aluminum is 80 MPa, brass 120. So basically what we're going to do... We're going to take these equations here, and we're going to solve them for P if one of these is over here. So if the stress in the aluminum is the magnitude, as I just showed you, we know all these values, we find P, all right? If we have sigma max, we're going to have P max, all right? Or another way of saying that is we're going to have P max simultaneously with sigma max, sigma max okay? So... Let's just do aluminum first. We'll just do it off to the right-hand side. The maximum stress in the aluminum was 80 MPa. Once again, putting in terms of the fundamental units. 
So we just get an answer. We don't have to decipher, you know, what's a mega newton per millimeter squared. We can just go straight away and say, get your answer in newtons. All right, and then this turns out to be like this, plugging in area for the aluminum, area for the brass, the ratio of the E's. In this case, since it's a ratio, you don't need to put it in times 10 to the 9 because that's just going to cancel out anyway. And the Pmax, if there was only aluminum to worry about, is 115.8 kilonewtons. All right? But this is not necessarily the maximum value of P because this is the maximum value for P if we're only talking about aluminum, all right? So we need to solve the same equation here, the same way we solved this one, to find what's going to be the maximum value for P if we consider the brass to be the one failing. All right, so I'm going to go and solve it the same way. And we can find that P in the brass max is 125 1.1 kilonewtons. All right, so we have these two maximum values. So you can imagine our cylinder is being compressed by an ever-increasing P. All right, once it reaches 115, bang, there goes the aluminum failure. All right, so that's going to be our maximum allowable load for P because we don't want any of these to fail. All right, so when you're finding these forces, the maximum value is the smallest value because that's going to be the first one to fail. All right. So some other situations you got to watch out for. I've messed up myself this in the past. If they ask you for like the width of something or if they say, what is the area I have to be? All right. What's the maximum area? Then it's going to be the other way around. All right. It's not going to be the smallest one. It's going to be the biggest one. So you always have to just think carefully about what's the situation. I try to imagine this bar being compressed, bang, there goes the brass. Okay, that's going to be the maximum value. Always think about the situation to find out which one of these you actually want. All right, don't go through the whole work of finding these two answers and then just pick the wrong one because you didn't think about it. All right, I've done that myself. So Pmax is going to be the smallest one. And round it off, 116 kilonewtons. So the largest load you can apply to this sort of cylindrical compression is 116 kilonewtons. All right. So in a quick recap for this video, we had this initial problem here. We realized it was statistically indeterminate. We did our forces. Relatively straightforward, the displacement was equal because each one of these materials compresses the same amount if you push it down. Then we went through and we solved for both of those equations. And then we realized that Pmax occurs at the same time as sigma max. We solved for different values, maximum values in each material, and then picked the lowest one as to be the greatest P that could be applied to this thing without it going into failure. All right, thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope this video helped you out. We'll see you around.